What's going guys, welcome back to today's video. And if you click this video, you are probably struggling to raise your SAT math score. I mean, you tried all these fancy books out there, you tried this fancy course, and you tried to study with a hot tutor, it just didn't work out. And you're probably on the verge of dropping out of high school and becoming a drug dealer. But you don't want to go there. You could get locked up, you could share a room with Big Bob. Shit, dude. Please don't let it be Big Bob, please don't let it be Big Bob, please don't let it be Big Bob. 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 I'm Big Bob. It's, it's not fun. And if it's your first time here, my name is John and I've been helping students get to a perfect score on the SAT for the past nine years. And I probably need to find better things to do with my life, but seeing students go from like a 450 to an 800 and going to the college of their dreams, it's just, it's just so much fun. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna go over exactly step by step on how to raise your SAT score. And it's actually really simple if you think about it. So if you wanna get into college of your dreams, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, you're probably going to become a drug dealer. I'm just kidding. Anyways, guys, let's get straight into it. All right, guys. So the first step in raising your SAT math score is to study all the concepts. OK, you want to know all the concepts because knowing the enemy is half the battle. And if you know what SAT is going to come at you with, then you already won half the battle. All you have to do is solve them. And you might be asking, hey, how am I supposed to know what's going to show up on the exam? If I don't know what's going to show up on the exam, how am I supposed to study for that? Well, you silly cookie, what you need to do is go to Amazon and buy one of these great books. One that I recommend is College Panda's Math Concept Book. I've looked at every single SAT book that's on the market and on the planet. And vast majority of them, they cover stuff that's not even on the exam or the questions are just too hard. The best one out there right now is College Panda. And once you have the book, it's going to outline exactly what's going to show up in the exam. And you want to know how to solve every single type of these questions. Let's say you didn't know triangles. Let's say you don't know like, like quadratics, parabola, volume stuff. You just need to study those and make sure you get them down. The worst place you can ever be in is having a practice test. Look at the question and you just don't know how to solve it because you never learned it. Like no matter, no matter how much time you have, you will never solve this question. We want to avoid that because it's stressful and it's demotivating and you're probably going to become a drug dealer. So let's not do that. Study the concepts. So if you have learned all the concepts, we're going to go to the second step. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a mixed set of practices. This step, your main focus is to see whether you have retained all the information from the first step. Did I remember all the formulas? Did I remember how to solve this question, that question? Do I know how to all of them? When you're studying in the first step, what you are essentially doing was going chapter by chapter by chapter. And each chapter is giving you a question on specifically that chapter. But SAT is not testing you like that. They're going to jumble up 16 different chapters and they're going to throw it at you and ask you to solve them and knowing how to solve questions chapter by chapter is a whole lot different from solving them mixed up all together and while you're doing this you're probably going to get a lot of questions wrong okay it's okay it's, it's, it's normal what you need to do is you need to make a list of concepts that you're consistently getting wrong okay and once you have a list make sure you go back to the concepts and study them again because that's where your weak points are you don't have to study the stuff that you get right because you're already good at that, okay? Only study the stuff you are getting wrong. And for this step, we're going to use Princeton Review's 500 practice questions. This is probably the most accurate version out there other than the College Board's practice exams. But we want to save the um, College Board stuff for the very end. And now that you have learned all the concepts and know how to solve them in a mixed setting, what we're going to do is we're going to start to get ourselves used to the SAT structure. And that's what the third step is all about. What we're going to do is we're going to take these practice tests, but without a time limit. Okay. For this step, what I recommend is you use College Panda's 10 practice tests. This is probably as close as it will get to the actual SAT without using actual SATs because we only have 10 of them. Doing these practice will not only get you used to and more comfortable with the whole SAT structure, but it's going to get you used to the whole progression of difficulty in the math section. You know how I mentioned we are not going to time this step? That's because we, our focus is not on the speed, but it's more on the accuracy. See, we want to we want to make sure that we can solve every single question that shows up on the SAT. See. You have learned everything you need to solve every single type of question on the SAT. Now it's a matter of just pushing yourself to solve that question. And let me tell you, you will get stuck. There will be questions that you get stuck on and you just don't know how to solve and you feel like you have never learned it. But trust me, if you have followed all my steps, you have learned all the things you need to solve that question. All you have to do just, is just sit there and push yourself and try to get the question right. If you can't get it on the day of, maybe you sleep on it, like close the book, go to bed, take a nap, whatever, sleep on it, and maybe come back the next day and try it again. And if you still can't get it, 
close the book, same thing, take a nap, sleep, come back the next day and try it again. Chances are, if you do that often enough, you, you will probably find out how to get that question right. However, if you still can't solve that question, just go to the solution book, but only go to the solution book if you have done it for at least two nights. And the final step is to take practice tests with a time limit. And congratulations, you have come to the final step. If you're at this step right now, and if you have followed everything to the T, you're probably at least at 700, okay? Your score's gonna be somewhere in the 700. And if you're trying to go for the perfect score, I'll tell you exactly what to do. Over the years of teaching, what I've realized is that people don't get a perfect score, not because they don't know how to solve a certain question, but because they are constantly making these silly mistakes. And if you are at 700, I can tell you, I can guarantee that you know how to solve all the questions and you even have like a couple minutes left on the exam. It's just that you make silly mistakes and you just get the questions wrong. And to solve this issue, what you have to do is you go really, really, really deep down on why you are getting that question wrong, okay? You have to analyze it in terms of like why you're getting it wrong and how you can prevent it from happening. And I go more in depth in this topic, in this video right there. And these four simple steps are how I got a perfect score on the SAT math and how all my other students got near perfect, if not perfect score on the SAT math. So make sure you follow these step by T, like it's gonna suck, you're not gonna wanna put in the effort, but getting a perfect score is not easy. And getting a 700 is not easy as well. But if you follow these steps, it's gonna be a lot simpler. What really kills me is having, like seeing these motivated students who want to raise their score, but they, they just don't know where to start. That's why they can't raise their score. And another group of students is they, they're, just get, they're just getting started, but they are doing it completely inefficiently. And so what ends up happening is they put all this effort into studying and they take a practice exam and their score's not going up, they become demotivated and they give up and they become a drug dealer. And I don't want to see that. I hope you guys found this video valuable. And if you want to see more of this kind of video, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment down below. And let's say you are at 700 and you have a special trick that you use to get to a high score, make sure you leave them down below. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for hopping on and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck.